In this problem, we're told, what is the minimum horizontal force F needed to make the box start moving in this figure? The coefficients of kinetic and static friction between the box and the floor are 0.24 and 0.41, respectively. So as usual, you want to draw what's going on. And so they already give us a figure, and we know we have a box with 28 kilograms, right? That's going to be its mass. We have this force above, which is 16 newtons, and it's 55 degrees to the horizontal. We have this force F, which is what we're going to be essentially solving for in this problem. We're also given the coefficient of static and kinetic friction. So we know the kinetic is 0.24 and static is 0.41. So that's essentially what we're given. And so let's talk about how we're going to solve this problem. So we're, what we're trying to do is find uh, the force F needed to make this box moving. And the way we want to find F is by taking the sum of the forces in the X direction. So I want you to think about this uh, logically, right? So what you want to do now is label the forces acting on it. So we have this force of friction acting this way, right? And we also have this force up top, but keep in mind, since it's at an angle, there's going to be an X and Y component of it. And so this is going to be the X, this is the Y. We have this force MG going straight down, right? This is the force due to gravity. And then we also have a normal force going up. So now that we have the forces labeled, what we're trying to do is find F so that we can overcome the forces in the X direction. Because if we want to be able to push it, right, we have to make sure F is at least greater than the forces in the X direction. So what forces do we have going in the opposite direction? We're going to have this force of friction going this way, and we're also going to have an X component of this going this way, right? So we're going to have these two forces, which is this is the X component of this force. So what we need to do is overcome those two forces. And we can see that when we take the sum of the forces in the X direction. So just keep in mind, logically, we're going to need to find the force of friction and add it to the X component of this, because it's got to be at least that if we want to be able to push it. But you can show it uh, based on it by taking the sum of the forces in the X direction. So the sum of the forces in the X direction equals MA. So force equals MA, Newton's second law. But in this case, the object isn't moving, so it's not accelerating, so it just equals zero. And then you just say zero equals, and then you add up the forces in the X. So force, which is this force, we also have the force, of, uh, the force of friction going in the opposite direction, which means we minus it. Because we generally say things going to the right, we say positive, and then things going to the left, we say negative. So F minus the force of friction goes negative. And then we also have the X component of this going this direction, right? Because it's pointing this way, and then we have to find the X component. So uh, let's find the X component so we can write it right here. So it's going to be minus whatever this is. But let's find the X component. So the way you find an X component, I'll just show you. So this is 16 newtons, right? I'm just redrawing this triangle. And we know it's at 55 degrees. And so what we're trying to do is find Y, which is the Y component, and X, which is the X component on this triangle. Because those are just going to be the X and Y components of our uh, force. So the way we find them is by using trig. So we know the cosine of an angle. In this case, it's 55 degrees. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just going to be the adjacent, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 16. And if we want to solve for x, right, which is what we're solving for, you get x equals 16 times the cosine of 55. So that's going to be the x component of this force. But before I write it here, let's just do the y. So for the y, you use sine. So the sine is uh, sine of our angle, right, which is 55 degrees is equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is y over the hypotenuse, which is 16. So multiplying both sides by 16, that's going to go ahead and give you the y component. So now we have both the y component and the x component. And we're going to use the y component later in the problem, but right now we're just focusing on the x. So now we have f, right? We're just adding the forces along the x this way. So we have f, we added that. We minus the force of friction because it's going this way. And now we're going to minus the x component, which we just found, which is 16 times the cosine of 55. And so what this tells you is that F is going to be equal to the force of friction, right? I'm just adding this to the other side in this. So it's going to be force of friction plus 16 times the cosine of 55. So now if we want to find the force of friction, we need, or sorry, F, which is the force to get it to move, we need to find the force of friction. So what is the force of friction equal to? So the formula for the force of friction, uh, friction equals mu sub S times S sub N. So you can, uh, in different problems, depending on whether the object's moving or not, you use mu sub k or mu sub s. In this case, our object is not moving. So we're going to use mu sub s, and they just give you mu sub k to sort of throw you off in this problem. So we're actually not going to need that. We're only going to need uh, the coefficient of static friction. So what we need to do is solve for the force of friction if we want to be able to find the force, right? And we know it's force of friction equals uh, mu sub s, which is 0.41, times f sub n. So now what we need to do is find the normal force. And so the way we find the normal force is by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction because we know the normal force is in the y direction. So we already went ahead and labeled all the forces. So some of the forces in the y equals ma, right? It's Newton's second law. But in this case, the object is not going to be moving. So it just equals zero because if the object's not moving, it's not accelerating, obviously. So zero equals, and then just like we did over here, we added them. 
we want to add them in this case, right? So what do we have? We have the normal force going upwards, which is what we want to solve for. So that's going upwards, so it's positive. Minus mg because it's going downwards. And then we also have the y component of this force up top. So we also have to minus that. So we want to minus the y component of this, which we just found over here, right? Remember, we found it. So it's minus 16 times the sine of 55. So solving for the normal force, we can just add these to the other side. So you get f sub n equals mg plus 16 times the sine of 55. So now we've got the normal force. And what we can do is plug it in here because the force of friction equals 0.41 times the normal force. So the normal force was just mg plus 16 times the sine of 55. So what we can do now is just plug in the force of friction. So F, which is what we're solving for, equals the force of friction, 0.41 times mg plus 16 times the sine of 55, right? And then we got to add the cosine, or 16 times the cosine of 55. And so when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get the force to get it to move is going to be equal to 127.054. So 127.054, I'm just going to round to 127. Just make sure you round however your seizure wants you to. But 127, and then we measure force in newtons. So 127 newtons, that's going to be the force required to get this box to move. So uh, this right here is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.